Diminished chords are often causing a lot of people trouble and that's a shame because it's actually a really nice chord to use. You can create some really beautiful progressions with it. In this video, I'm going to cover the two main categories of diminished chords, show you how they work, how they sound, and also some of the progressions where you're going to find them. And actually, diminished chords themselves are not really that difficult. I think the problem here is that a lot of the time you're being told to think something that doesn't really fit with what you hear and that's getting in the way. My name is Jens Larsen. Learn jazz, make music. As I said in the intro, I split the diminished chords into two groups, and that's because I'm thinking in terms of functional harmony or tonal harmony, a shocking new way of looking at chords that's about 400 years old. So the way that I do this is that I'm thinking about all the chords, splitting them into roughly three groups, which would be tonic, subdominant, and dominant. Since the diminished chord is a chord that doesn't rest in itself, it always wants to resolve, then you can't really imagine a piece of music where the root chord is a diminished chord. Let me just show you what I mean because you can easily hear this. Here is what a cadence to a diminished chord would sound like. So you can hear that this doesn't really want to resolve and we need to go here to be back home in the key. Often when I talk about the subdominant diminished chords then I get these long comments about how they don't really exist but I'm actually talking about how they sound in the chord progression so before you get all riled up and start leaving long stories about theory then maybe go a little bit further in the video to the point where I'm playing subdominant diminished chords so you can hear how they sound and how they work in the progression and then if you don't agree with me then you can just start a riot in the comments. First I'm gonna go over the dominant diminished chord and some of the progressions where you'll find that. A dominant to tonic resolution sounds like this. And if you're using some more common jazz voicings, then you get something like this. And I'm sure you can hear how this is essentially the same as this diminished voicing resolving to a tonic chord. Now that you know what the dominant diminished chord sounds like, then we can check out some chord progressions with it before we're moving on to the slightly more exciting subdominant diminished chord. It's not often you come across a dominant diminished that's actually substituting for the dominant in the key. It's much more common to use this for a secondary dominant to make a smoother progression. And if you're in the key of C major, for example, then you're more likely to find dominant diminished chords that are leading to the D minor or the A minor, so the two or the six of the key. Dominant diminished chords are mostly used as leading chords. So they're there to sort of help move along the progression and you're mostly going to find them actually on the leading note of the chord that they're going to. So in this case, of course, C sharp diminished resolving up to D minor. You can find them in other inversions as well, but that's a lot less common. A chord progression that you probably already know would be this one. Here I'm using the diminished chord, so dominant diminished, leading from C sharp up to D minor. And really this is just a variation on a one, six, two, five. So we're really coming from one and then, well, maybe not a six, like an auxiliary dominant, D minor to G7. So it's just a way of creating a more smooth bass line, moving from the C up to the D minor, and a substitution for that A7. Another great way to use a dominant diminished is if you have a 2-5 and it's leading back to 1 but you actually want to go to the 6, then you can turn that into a chord progression where you're using a dominant diminished like this. So here I'm really just playing a basic 2-5, so D minor to G7, but then instead of going to C, I'm turning the G7 into a G sharp diminished, which is essentially, of course, just a dominant diminished, kind of substituting for, for an E7 and then using that to go to A minor. And this is something that you can find in quite a few standards. It's used in Prelude to a Kiss and it's also in on the sunny side of the street. In general, the dominant diminished chords are really great for passing chords and extra embellishments and you can add them to a lot of progressions where they will fit quite easily and help move the progression along and give it a very natural, very strong flow. The other type of diminished chord that you're going to encounter is the sharp four diminished and its inversions. So this is a subdominant diminished chord. You can see it as sort of an altered subdominant. It's derived from the subdominant, which maybe sounds like a strange thing, but actually if you think about it, the four minor chords are also altered subdominants. And you can also hear that they're subdominant chords if you listen like this. In the key of C, a subdominant resolves back to the tonic like this. 
and the sharp four diminished resolves back to the tonic like this. I think it's quite clear from these examples that this chord resolves to C, but it doesn't resolve in the same way that a B diminished or a dominant chord resolves. Of course, if you're not open to the idea that a diminished chord can also be a subdominant chord, then you probably can't hear how this works, and that's fine too. A thing that can be a little bit difficult with the sharp four diminished chord is that sometimes it will resolve back to the tonic, like I just showed you, so a progression like this. But sometimes it will also resolve back to a subdominant chord, so you get a progression like this one. And this type of resolution is quite common, especially with the inversions of the sharp four diminished chord, as you will see in the next section of the video. The most clear or obvious version of a sharp four diminished chord is probably this one, that I also use sort of as a reference when I want to remember what it sounds like, which I really think is important with these things. You want to think about how the chord sounds and also how it sounds in the context of the chord progression. You probably know this chord progression already from songs like Rhythm Changes or St. Thomas or even in a blues. This is very common, this is something that you're going to come across everywhere. But of course you also have versions of the sharp four diminished chord where it's an independent chord without being part of a subdominant chord progression, like this. And this type of chord progression is something that you can come across both as a suspension in a chord progression, so it's not really an independent chord, but sometimes you'll also see it in songs like I Remember You or You Do Something To Me, where it's really sort of an independent sound within the chord progression, and very often it's also reharmonized as a 2-5, and that's usually a minor 2-5 from the sharp four. Another very common variation of the sharp four diminished is also what we refer to as the flat three diminished that resolves back to a two chord, so that would be this progression. And this is in fact an example of a sharp four diminished chord that resolves back to a subdominant chord. In this case it's an inversion, so it's the flat three resolving back to the two chord, but it is the same kind of sound. Now that you have some examples of diminished chords, you've heard what they sound like and some of the common progressions, then you probably also want to improvise over them. For that you can check out this video where I'm going over how the scales are found that fit with these chords, what was, will work in the key, how you construct some lines on it, giving you some examples of lines, and also talking about some of the useful target notes to make melodies that really make sense.